Hi everybody, I'm very glad that I've finally gotten a chance to take some time off from work to make this video. It's been very hectic lately and uh, uh, I had this going around my mind all week and I've uh, been dying to get a video done. It's a video response to other people uh, here in the vinyl community who have made Be Beatles related videos on this topic. Uh, let me tell you the origins of it. Uh, we have a, uh, a commenter in our videos. His name, I believe, is John Alello. hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And uh, sometimes people will make suggestions as to video ideas. And I don't know if I speak for my other friends here in the community, but you, there's so many uh, requests. We can't make all of them because it's just, there's just way too many. And uh, can't get to every, every one. But this one was a pretty good suggestion. And uh, some people here have made videos. Among them, I have a list here. We have uh, Paul, a.k.a. Uh, fit to be tie-dyed. He made a video response. Uh, we had Beetle Brad. He made a video response. And we had Matthew Street, my friend Matt. He made a video response. And those are the only three that I've watched so far. If I've missed anybody, please let me know. I'll check yours out. Um, the question, the idea uh, that John had was, and I hope I got, got the wording right, what are some solo Beatles songs that you would like to see as Beatles songs, like any solo uh, hits or tracks in general, Beatles uh, solo stuff that can be done by the Beatles, what would it have been like if they tackled those songs? Um, you know, from the very beginning when I was watching the videos back, I knew that my approach to this video was going to be somewhat different. Uh, before I get to showing you my four picks, I have one of, by each of the ex-Beatles. It wasn't easy to come by them. I had said that mine was going to be a different approach. And the reason it's a different approach is because this also leads me to a, uh, a kind of topic that uh, is worth a video all on its own. And that's, are there solo Beatles songs that are as good or better than the Beatles themselves? And a lot of people think, I think it's a pretty common uh, acceptance out there, they say that... Uh, no, there aren't. You know, they have that old saying, uh, the whole is better than the sum of its parts. I don't buy that when it comes to Beatles and solo Beatles music. So, in that regard, I kind of have to say, when I was watching these videos here by my friends here, um, while I enjoyed them and, and respected them and wanted to see what their opinions were, I was kind of confused about something. Because I do not think necessarily that uh, just because it's a Beatles song and all four Beatles participate automatically it's better than anything that they did solo. I think there are some solo Beatles songs that we love just as as they are and that if they were to be tackled by the Fab Four something would be different. Something would not be as good. And uh, I'm going to go down the list here. For example when I watched the uh, Paul, that's fit to be tie-dyed, when I watched his video, he, he mentioned a couple of songs. It Don't Come Easy by Ringo Starr, and he mentioned Too Many People by Paul McCartney amongst his choices. And I, Again, uh, I don't mean to make this sound too critical, so you guys hope you'll give me a free pass because I'm just trying to give you my true gut feelings on this. I thought to myself, for one thing, a song like It Don't Come Easy, for example, is a classic as it is. Sounds great. It's already a big... Ringo hit. Um, I can't imagine why we would want that song to be tried out by any, any of the other Beatles or all four Beatles playing on it. You know, the other one that Paul picked, uh, Too Many People. Too Many People is a song where uh, Paul McCartney is, has a few jabs at John Lennon in there. It's kind of the feud that they had during the, uh, you know, the breakup. So, when Paul sings about too many people preaching practices, he's really referring to John and probably Yoko, too. So it's like, I don't understand how the Beatles would perform that together. These are, these are the things I was thinking of as I was making these videos. Now, um, <clears throat> Beatle Brad, how you doing, Brad? Beatle Brad uh, did John Lennon's Just Like Starting Over as one of his picks, and I thought to myself immediately, I thought the whole idea of double fantasy was having John and Yoko together. Double Fantasy and the songs on Double Fantasy, in my opinion, really only work in that context. It's uh, John and Yoko, husband and wife, Double Fantasy, two people, uh, with a back and forth dialogue. I don't understand why the Beatles would be performing a song like Just Like Starting Over. It makes no sense to me. 
you know, what would be the benefit in that? It's about John and Yoko getting back into the, the swing of things again. So that's my opinion. Um, now, Matthew Street. Matthew Street uh, picked the song, which I've always said is so great that I think that uh, it could be a song that would be a Beatles song. And that song is from the Tug of War album by Paul McCartney. It's the song Wanderlust. I think Wanderlust is a, is a classic. It's something that could have been on the White Album. I mean, right? Um, but just as is, I think, again, I think Wanderlust is perfect as it is on uh, Tug of War. I can't imagine why I would want the other three Beatles to be on Wanderlust. Again, my opinion. Um, and I'm gonna just, before I get to my four picks, I just want to bring up uh, the guy that I work with. Uh, as I say, I went to work. This wasn't easy for me because I decided that uh, my approach to this was going to be instead of looking for songs that are solo songs that are either big hits or solo songs that are already very good as they are and don't require any altering or changing with the other guys playing on it. Um, I, could, I couldn't come up with that. I was looking for four solo songs by each of the Beatles that I thought needed a lot of work and that would have benefited somehow by the other three Beatles playing on it. Now, here's some sacrilege, but like I say, I deal straight here, folks. Um, the Beatles, by their own admission, and they've admitted this a lot of times in their career, are not, aside from Paul possibly, are not musical virtuosos. They're not really instrumentally the greatest. It's not like having George Harrison on lead guitar always makes a song better. Sometimes people play better than George. And the case in point I'm coming up with is an example like that. While I was at work all week, I couldn't think of four songs. And my friend Anthony, who I was alluding to at the beginning here of this passage, Anthony works with me. And I, it's funny, here I am racking my brain for a week trying to come up with four songs. And Anthony at work, I said to him, well, what, what's four songs you would pick? And right away, without missing a beat, off the top of it, Anthony goes, My Love, Photograph, Mind Games, and My Sweet Lord. And I said to him, I said, Anthony, those are, those are all big hits. But it almost sounded like Anthony was rattling off four solo Beatle hits, some of his favorite songs. I don't know if it's just a matter of this exercise of saying, here are four of my favorite Beatle songs, uh, solo Beatle songs, excuse me. Here are four of my favorite solo Beatle songs. Let's see the Beatles do it as a group. I mean, My Love, let's start with My Love. Anthony loves the song My Love. I know he loves that song. I'm going to take a little drink of water here. Oh, okay. I know Anthony loves this song, My Love, but you get that Henry McCullough lead guitar solo in there. My Love is a perfect song as it is. Hearing Paul and Linda's voice together, and after all, the song is about Linda, uh, dedicated to Linda. So you have Linda McCartney's voice in there, and you have uh, Henry playing away, wailing away on that beautiful guitar solo. Look, I love George Harrison. He's, he's one of the Beatles, but I don't know that George Harrison's guitar could have been any better than that. Do we really need to have a Beatles version of My Love without Linda in it and without uh, Henry's guitar solo? Same thing with Photograph. Photograph, the Ringo song, is a classic. It's a number one hit. It's perfect. I wouldn't change a thing about that song. Not one thing. And that includes putting John Lennon or Paul McCartney on it. You know? Mind Games, same thing. I think Mind Games is a nice hit single by John. No need to change that. And My Sweet Lord, Anthony, I know you're listening, buddy. No, no offense, but My Sweet Lord is is what it is. It was a big, huge radio number one hit in 1970 or 71. Um, it was all over the airwaves. It's, it's a classic. It's perfect as it is. My Sweet Lord would not be My Sweet Lord with the other Beatles on it. And that's my... Three and a half cents on that. So anyway, now here's my picks. I've already gone a little long, so I'm going to try to speed this part up. I tried to come up with four individual songs, as I say, that I thought needed work, or that maybe one of the one or all of the Beatles could have added to. First, I went to the Mind Games album, and this was not, you know, as I say, not easy to pick because it took a week to come up with this. I went with the song um, One Day at a Time. Um, I'm going for songs that I think have potential, but maybe they were not. They didn't reach their full potential. You know, John singing one day at a time in that high falsetto voice, which isn't really that bad. But 
I wonder if Paul McCartney had been involved in this, if he would have been able to uh, maybe sing along with him or maybe try to give him some ideas what better to do with his voice. Um, I also think that uh, it could be interesting having Paul on, on that song one day at a time, maybe doing some background vocals instead of... Uh, it sounds like we have women on there. I mean, nothing against women singers. I mean, you got to cover everything these days. Got to watch everything you say. But I mean, uh, I, I just don't know. I think I think this particular song would have be, would have benefited from Paul McCartney's input. So that's why I went with one day at a time. Now we're gonna go to George Harrison. Um, I don't know. I decided to take the Somewhere in England album. And I thought of the opening track, Blood from a Clone. Blood from a Clone. I like that song. I think it's a good opening. But it's a little clumsy. Always struck me as a little uh, structured, weird. I think uh, Lennon and McCartney's input uh, would have helped. Maybe they could have like uh, made some suggestions to George how not to try to fit so many long phrases into a small space. I always think George has a, a knack or a, a bad habit, to be honest. Let's not call it a knack. A bad habit in my opinion of trying to put a lot of phrases into songs even from this album other example is all those years ago you know uh i said one the devil's best friend no friend at all you know i mean he tries to like put uh, all these words in here so i think blood from a clone I, I i like the topic the topic of the song is about the record industry and uh you know the bullshit that goes on in the music business and i think lennon and mccartney could have added to that now we'll go to Ringo Starr. Um, hmm, I had a lot of songs in mind, but I went to the Ringo the Fourth album, and I picked the song that a lot of people I know on my channel have said they like. It's a song called Gave It All Up. It's a song about childhood and growing up and stuff like that. It suits Ringo to a T, um, but I wonder again uh, if Lennon and McCartney had uh, participated in helping with some of the lyrics, you know, modifying some of the words a little bit, making them better. Um, Coach Ringo a little better on his voice. I don't think Ringo sings the song Gave It All Up as well as he could have. And maybe John and Paul could have encouraged him a little bit. And maybe uh, some, you know, background vocals from Lennon, McCartney, Harrison. You know, maybe some guitar work from George. I think Gave It All Up would have been an uh, improvement. Now, I saved the most uh, difficult for last. Paul McCartney it was really, really hard to come up with uh, a, a pick for Paul. And then I went to the flowers in the dirt album which i've always felt was a good uh, comeback album for paul uh, or i should say you know getting there he you know I, it's never been a favorite of mine there's some songs i love on here but um one song that i think uh, there's a couple of songs i was actually gonna pick my my brave face believe it or not but i it was a tie between my brave face and another song called how many people I think maybe how many people is the one I'm going to go with. How many people, and at the, I meant to do my research before this. I don't know if it was an Elvis, one of the Elvis Costello songs or not, damn it. I meant to look that up. Um, if it was Elvis Costello, even better because John and Elvis Costello are very similar. If not, so be it. But I thought how many people is, 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 is missing some potential. It has potential, but it's missing something. and it, it, it ha It's not realizing its full potential. And I think that if uh, it was co-written with John, and maybe John could help out with some vocals uh, and you know, harmonies and things like that, and maybe, again, maybe structure it a little different, maybe it could be co-written, you know, by McCartney with Lennon. I think maybe how many people could be improved. Anyway, this video went on way too long, folks. Uh, anyway, that's it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Give me your feedback. Have a good day.